Hey gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up. Today what I want to talk about is this fabulous native weed right here, Datura stramonium. So when we first found this in a client's garden, I only recognized it because of my weed ID class from college. I remember learning about this, but I've never actually seen it growing in Spokane. So it was kind of just in the back of my mind what this weed was. I see it a lot in Seattle and you can actually smell it a lot in Seattle. You, you can't miss the smell of this weed. But for some reason I had it in my head that it was noxious, so I came over here to deal with it myself, but in my research I realized this is actually native to Central America and it naturalized here in North America. And so it's actually considered a native, and I didn't know that. Datura is a genus with nine species of poisonous flowering plants in it, and it's in the Solanaceae family, which is the nightshade family, same as tomatoes and potatoes. This particular Datura has several common names that vary by region, but they include Thorn apple, moonflower, hell's bells, devil's trumpet, devil's snare, devil's weed, jimson weed, which is the most common one I've heard here, and Jamestown weed, which is where the name jimson weed came from, it looks like. Somebody shortened it or something. Stink weed, loco weed, prickly burr, false castor oil plant, and devil's cucumber. I've also seen common names of angel's trumpet and other things, but those might be for other varieties. I saw several videos from other YouTubers saying what a great plant this is and how wonderful it smells and blah blah blah. Again, I think they have a different variety because this one, this one smells like rancid peanut butter, okay? It's awful. Every part of this plant is toxic and so I'm going to wear my gloves while I'm dealing with this. It also has a sap that can irritate your skin. So gloves are really important. Make sure to wear PPE when dealing with this plant. This can be quite an invasive weed, especially in temperate climates. It reseeds profusely, and the seeds can lay dormant in the soil for years until the soil is disturbed, which is what we presume happened here, because we actually just pulled up a bunch of established plants. We're gonna redo this flower bed, and then this weed popped up. It was never here before. So, but we're guessing the seeds were already in the soil and just waiting for this opportunity. <laughs> so here they are, and we just weeded this less than two weeks ago. So this is all growth in the last two weeks. This is how far this has grown. It's already blooming. I'm honestly surprised there's not seed pods on them yet, but I'm also gonna take a couple of these home and just watch it under controlled conditions and, and see what it does. The seed pods are balls that have spikes all over them usually. There's uh, one reference that says summer bald, but most of them are really spiky, which is where the common name thorn apple comes from. It's much smaller than an apple, it's more like a crab apple, like this size, but it's spiky and thorny, so that's where that common name came from. Now my focus in this video is about identification and removal and eradication. If you don't want this weed, say if you have young children or you have curious pets that like to eat things, this is a dangerous plant to have, okay? So you might want to get rid of it. But it would be a miss if I didn't mention some of the uses and other dangers of this plant. So I'm going to talk about them briefly. I'm not going to get into detail. This plant has been used by Native Americans for years for religious ceremonies and other things. Um, it has medicinal properties. Again, I'm not going to get into details of this. You can look that up if you're interested. Herbalists use it for certain things, uh, mostly painkillers and stuff like that. But it's also hallucinogenic and it's highly toxic. According to Wikipedia, it causes intense visions. It is unlikely ever to become a major drug of abuse owing to the effects upon the mind and body frequently perceived subjectively as highly unpleasant, giving rise to a state of profound and long lasting disorientation with a potentially fatal outcome. Hear that, fatal outcome. Don't do this plant, okay? It contains tropane alkaloids, which are responsible for the deliriant effects and may be severely toxic. There were plenty of stories online when I was researching this last night about, I took some Datura and I woke up in the hospital or, you know, similar things. And again, I'm not gonna get into detail about this. If you're looking for a trip report, there are plenty of other videos about that. That's not what I do, okay? But it would be irresponsible for me to not mention how dangerous, toxic, and deadly this plant can be. So I wanna make sure that I include that in this video. Datura stramonium is an ill-smelling, erect, annual, freely branching herb that forms a bush up to two to five feet tall. The root is long, thick, fibrous, and white. 
The stem is stout, erect, leafy, smooth, and pale yellow-green to reddish-purple in color. The stem forks off repeatedly into branches, and each fork forms a leaf and a single erect flower. The leaves are about 3 to 8 inches long, smooth, toothed, soft, and irregularly undulated. The upper surface of the leaves is a darker green and the bottom is a light green. The leaves have a bitter and nauseating taste which is imparted to extracts of the herb and remains even after the leaf has been dried. Deterus stramonium generally flowers throughout the summer. The fragrant flowers have a pleasing odor, are trumpet shaped, white to creamy or violet, and two and a half to three and a half inches long, and they grow on short stems from either the axles of the leaves or the places where the branches fork. The calyx is long and tubular, swollen at the bottom and sharply angled, surmounted by five sharp teeth. The corolla, which is folded and only partially open, is white, funnel-shaped, and has prominent ribs. The flowers open at night, emitting a pleasant fragrance and are fed upon by nocturnal moths. The egg-shaped seed capsule is one to three inches in diameter and either covered with spines or bald. At maturity, it splits into four chambers, each with dozens of small black seeds. All right, now, since I've never actually dug this weed before, I need to know what I'm dealing with. So I'm gonna start by digging a couple small ones to get an idea of what that root system looks like, and then I'll work my way up to the bigger ones. Let's start right here with this one. I'm gonna go a few inches away from where the plant actually is. Stick my shovel in and just kind of loosen it slowly. Grab the plant and pull. I already feel it's coming up. So yeah, that's a fibrous root. It's not too bad. There's a little bit of a tap right there, but that's nothing to what I was expecting. Yeah, that's no big deal. Easy dig. These little ones I could probably just shuffle home and be done. Okay, cool. Now we'll try a bigger one. Yeah, no big deal. And I'm done. That whole bed took me less than 20 minutes to weed, start to finish, from pulling to shuffle hoeing to raking it smooth. Um, I'm not spending a lot of time to detail it because we're going to be back soon to plant anyway, and the crew's going to be digging it all up and planting it then. But I did rake the soil smooth, and in doing so, I sifted up a lot of the other weeds that we wanted out. But then I also left all of the sedum album that's scattered about this bed because we kind of want that as a ground cover later so we're leaving a lot of that thank you so much for watching that video i hope you learned something from it and that it was valuable for you if it was let me know by hitting the like button down below leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video if you'd like and remember to subscribe so you see future content like this on that note everybody thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the garden